And so we're right here right now saying thank you, God, for your tremendous blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Not even to mention the clothes, the cars, the cash, the commodity, our health and our strength. God, we thank you for all of it. You've been so good to us. You've been so kind. You've been so generous. You've been so gracious. You've treated us better than we honestly deserve for you to treat us. And so right now we say thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. So we do pray for Brother Dave Callahan and Sister Phil, and we pray for Sister Almira. We pray for Aunt May, Lord, who's still going through her season of rehab. We pray, God, that you would lift up Aunt May. God, we, we pray that you would give her the activities of her limbs. This is, a, this is a lady who helps people in where she lives and sees about them and concerned about them. This is a lady that right now, while she's in a rehab center, in a nursing home, she wants to feed those that can't feed themselves. God, I pray that you would restore and may strength. Give her the activities of a limb. Help her to be able to drive again and get around like she was getting around even before this happened. God, we ask for strength as only you can give. And then, Lord, again, we do pray and thank you for Journey being here today, knowing what she's going through. But we do pray for the Fields family, Lord, and ask again your grace and your mercy be upon them and allow them to recover from this major accident that they were involved in on yesterday. Again, for all of our graduates, for all of the families that are celebrating, God, thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for what you're yet going to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all who agreed said amen. 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 Turn with me in your Bibles, if you will, for while you're yet standing to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And we're going to look at one verse today, and that's going to be verse 32 of John chapter number 12. And I'm going to, I'm going to read verse 33 just to give us the context in terms of what this verse really means to us, what it really says to us in terms of many times we use that verse and uh, just want to help us to see in the Bible what it really refers to. And this is the, these are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 32, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all to myself. And watch this, verse 33. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. And I just want to tag the text today. The subject has already been given to us, if I be lifted up. If I be lifted up. You may be seated uh, in the presence of the Lord. Uh, quite possibly, this sentence uh, indicates 15, 15 of the greatest words uh, ever uttered uh, in history of humanity. It answered who, who would bruise or crush the head of the serpent and whose heel the serpent would bruise or crush according to Genesis 3.15. You remember this thing started in the garden. The Bible says that when God began to uh, pronounce the curse, he did it first on the serpent, the one who deceived Eve. Uh, the Bible says that he says to him, uh, because what you have, you have done this, he says, but ultimately uh, her seed is going to bruise your head and you ultimately are going, is going to bruise his heel. But we see the fulfillment of that took several thousand years. Uh, for it to actually come to pass. But we do know that in the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that reality became, it became, a re it became, it, the reality came to fruition as a result of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So when we think about it, when we look at this verse, this, where John is preaching to us, it is some of the greatest words that you and I could have ever heard. And I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. You know, throughout my life, there have been some good things that people have said, things that have been encouraging, things that people have said that have been quite edifying. And I have always, in a very real sense, remembered a lot of those things that people have said, some things that have been said many, many, many years ago. But because of the impact of what they said, it gave such 
credence to what they said. It gave such encouragement. It gave such, in some case, that was rebuke. It gave such correction that I still remember those words even to this day. That some way, somehow, God uses those words to still be a source of encouragement to us. My, 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 my neighbor, uh, Brother Frank, Frank Smith, one few years ago, he shared with me a short poem of a, uh, a teacher that, uh, that taught him, and it's just a brief word, and basically the paraphrase was it that whatever you start to do, you make sure that you do it and you do it well. That's the paraphrase of it. And even to this day, there are times I'm out doing my yard, and sometimes I'm in my mind, I'm thinking, I need to just, just do just enough just to get by. I need to cut a corner. And then I look at Brother Smith, and I remember that poem, and I'm saying, here I am having to go do this. I still remember my mama telling me that the bathroom wasn't clean until you get behind the toilet. I still remember that. You know, there are things that people share with you that, that literally can have an impact on your life, and it can have an impact on your life for the rest of your life. So when I look at this verse, when I look at these 15 words that we say are, actually in the Greek it will be 14 words that we're looking at, and it would literally say to us that from this point on, our lives are totally different because of the statement that Jesus made, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. And when you think about the fact he said, and I, and when you look at just the fact he says, I, uh, that's, that's personal. He's referring to himself. And when he does that, he is literally causing us to think about how John, the, the, the narrator of this particular text, how he describes our Lord just in chapter 1. When I was studying this passage, I was actually intrigued. I was amazed. I know I've read it before time and time again. But when you, when you say, and I, when you think about who that person is, I think all of us, many of you, have, have in some way, somehow done a resume. And you know, when you do a resume, you've got to kind of give a history of things that you've done in the past, maybe what you're currently doing, even some things that you probably would like to do. But it's a reminder of things that you have already accomplished. And John, when he writes this, he is writing someone about someone who has already done some things in the past, but these things that he's done in the past still count for the present. So when you look at John chapter 1, these are some things that when you're talking about, and I... Notice what he says about himself or what the word would say. First of all, he is the word. He was with God. He was the creator. The Bible says what in the beginning, all things what were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. The Bible in John chapter 1 says he was the light. He was the true light. He was the glory of the only begotten of the Father. He was full of grace and truth. He was Jesus Christ. He was the one among them. He was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the one to whom you see the Spirit descending upon. He, the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. He's the Son of God. He's the Messiah, him of whom Moses and the prophets wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, he's the Son of Joseph. He's the Son of God. He's the King of Israel. He's the Son of Man. There are over 20 things that describe when he says, and I. In other words, what he was saying, it was not just anybody that was being lifted up. Jesus was personally speaking of himself. And I, and you know, anytime that you use I, you're referring personally to yourself. And Jesus now is saying to us, not, not Moses, not Jeremiah, not Isaiah, not Zephaniah, not Zechariah, not Malachi, but and I, if I. Notice again, notice this, 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 this man, this this great man. He, not only we look at the man, the person of Jesus Christ, who was the man, we look at the miracles that he performed. Notice, think, and you read it again in John, the Bible says he changed water to blind in chapter 2. He healed a nobleman's son in chapter 4. He made a man walk who had been able to walk for 38 years in chapter 5. He fed 5,000 people with two fish and five barley loaves and had leftovers in chapter 6. In chapter, in chapter 6, it also says that he walked on the water. He gave sight to a man that was born blind in chapter 9. He raised Lazarus from the dead in chapter 12. So what I'm trying to get you to understand, or chapter 11, he, he, what, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that this is a person who says, and I, but he is a man who's described in great ways, but he is also a miracle worker. And I, in other words, I'm not a Johnny come lately. I'm not just someone who just showed up. I am who I am. And I'm able to do things that only 
God can do so. And I, if I be lifted up. Notice again, not only do we see the man, not only do we see the miracles, but we also see the message of I am. Remember, you read the book of John. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. And so when he says, and I, we're not talking about anybody else other than the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not talking about anybody that has a resume like he does. You're not talking about anybody that has a biography like he does. You're not talking about anybody that had a birth like he did. You had to talk about somebody that had a death that was different than everybody else. And I, notice again what he says, if I be lifted up, that's, that's an encouraging word to us because his lifting up would suggest to us that it, 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 it is something that would cause him to be raised higher than everybody else. Yeah. Well, first of all, we think about it, what he did on the cross, his, uh, his death on the cross, and I'd be lifted up. He was lifted up. Here's a fancy word for expiation. Everybody say expiation. That word expiation would say, it, it would mean that he atoned for the sins of all of us on the cross of Jesus. In other words, when I say the atonement, meaning this, he brought at one minute between us and God on the cross of Calvary. I'm going to say it one more time. He brought at one minute between us and God on the cross of Calvary. In other words, had Jesus not died on the cross, you and I would still be lost. If Jesus had not died on the cross, we would still be separated from the Lord. If Jesus had not died on the cross, we would still be sinners that are destined for a burning hell. We, if Jesus had not died on the cross, and he not be lifted up, his expiation, his he, he died in our place, and the goal was not for him to die for himself, but the goal was to put you and God, us and God, back together again. You got to understand, y'all, when we were, when we, when God first created us, when God first created us, we were perfect. Remember what the Bible says, we were created in the image and the very likeness of God. And so if I could draw a straight line that way, it was just absolutely as straight as it could have been. We were literally perfect. But in chapter 3, when sin came in, that thing got, it wasn't this no more. It was, you couldn't even figure out who we were. So that's why the lion came in and the cheating came in and the bike body came in and, 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 and the immorality comes in and all sorts of other sins began to creep in. Now, aren't you glad to know that Jesus was lifted up and in him being lifted up, it has also lifted you up from where you used to be? From how you used to think, the things you used to say, the folk you used to hang around with, the trouble you used to give, you've been lifted up because why? He says, and I remember that person. That's the man with the miracles and the message again of I am. But he was lifted up for expiation that he brought you and I back together with God. And y'all, that's a, that's a miraculous thing to think about because we were separated from God. God had every right. God had every right to say, here, this is over. I'm not going to put up with these folk like this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to go through all of this for them. But because of his love, he so loved the world that he did what he gave, his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. So here we are today, coming from the north, the east, the west, and the south. Here we are today because Jesus has put us at one with God. We can actually call God our Father. Not only was the, there's the expiation, but there's also the exaltation. In other words, and I, if I be lifted up, you know what Jesus, when, 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 when again, when he's saying that, remember early on, Jesus had said, Jesus had said, notice again, if you would, at verse, at verse 27, just go up with me with that just for just a moment. He says, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to the world, right? But notice again what he, what, what, the reason that he was doing that is because Jesus had made a request. He had, had had a desire that his father would glorify him. And you know what glorify means. It means to honor. It means to praise. It means to give reverence to. It means to give the highest respect. But Jesus understood the way of his exaltation would be by way of the cross. 
And I, if I be lifted up, if the expiation again will put you at one with God, but we recognize again the exaltation is that I would be lifted up, physically lifted up from the earth. Think about that from the earth. He was lifted up from the earth that he created. So Yes, he did. He created the world. John chapter 1 verse 3 would say, all things were made through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. And I, if I be lifted up. Now, now I want you to understand, he's not talking about us lifting him up in praise. No, he's talking about literally, if I be lifted up. If they take me up, I can take you up. If they take me up, I can, I can bring you where you need to be. But if I be lifted up from the earth, the earth that he created, isn't that something to think about? Here it is, the very creator of the world is now saying, if I be lifted up from the work that I created, and of course, verse 33, help us to understand what the lifting up was. The lifting up was the crucifixion. The lifting up was his being raised between us and God to put us and God back together again. The lifting up was the lifting up on the cross, the gruesome, gory cross that Jesus had to endure for us. The lifting up meant that his hand had to be nailed. The lifting up meant that his side had to be pierced. The lifting up meant that his feet had to be nailed. It was an excruciating painful lifting up but he said but if and I if I in other words if I that's a subjunctive of saying as in suggesting to us if I if I get I gotta get up in order for change to take place for you because if I don't go up you will forever stay down so he's saying and if I if I be lifted up what from the earth the earth that I created not only is it the earth that I created, but it's the earth that I also control. Notice the Bible reminds us that the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. I got to help you understand, Jesus was in total control of his being lifted up, y'all. You remember, you all remember early on, every time somebody would, somebody would say some things, they just say, oh, my hour is not yet come, my hour is not yet come, my hour is not yet come. But finally, when we get to this text, he says that my hour has finally come. And the reason he was saying that is because what he had said earlier in John 10, I got the power, ain't nobody taking my life from me. I got the power to lay it down, and I also got the power to raise it up again. If you don't praise the Lord for nothing else, you ought to praise him for knowing that you serve a God that decided when he was going to die and decided when he was going to get up. And notice what he's saying. The very earth that I created and everything that is in that earth is now what's trying to kill me. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The very earth that I made for man to enjoy, they're using now the very instruments from the very world that I made to ultimately assassinate me, to murder me in their mind. Because remember, everything that they used to kill Jesus was made by him. Can I get somebody to help me just a little while? That tree that he hung on, he made that tree. But watch this. Here's the, here's the good thing about it. When the Bible says, when he said, let that be, he already knew what tree was going to be at the cross that they were going to make him be on that he was ultimately going to die on. You got to know those whips that they use with bone fragments and steel in it, that was made by him. That crown of thorns that they put on his head, that was made by him. He made everything, and he made it all for a purpose. And watch here now. He's making it for the purposes. If I and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, the very earth that I've created, the very earth that I control, and I, if I be lifted up, here's what I'll do. And I'm about to close. We'll draw. We'll draw. That's what he said. We'll, we'll draw. In other words, that again, a subjunctive is suggested. It's something that will happen in the future. But, but, but it starts with, first of all, me being lifted up. Because if I'm not lifted up, you can't be drawn. And watch this. And that word drawn means this. It, does, it doesn't always mean that you're necessarily dragging and screaming and hollering. All of us didn't come that way. But the reality is he had to draw us to himself. Oh, y'all, and I know we say that sometimes. I came to Jesus just as I was. Here's what I want you to know. You didn't come on your own. Can I get a witness in here? 
I know we like to think sometimes I came. Oh, no, 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 no. Romans chapter 3 says, no, you didn't. Romans chapter 3 says that there was no one looking for God, no one searching for God. There's no one who desired God. He says we were like, it was like, we were like serpents with poison ass on, or ass on our lips. We did not want anything to do with God. So what did he have to do? He had to draw us to himself. But notice how he does it. And I, if I be lifted up, listen, who wouldn't be drawn? To a man that never did anything wrong, but is dying for everybody that did something wrong. Who wouldn't be drawn to someone who would be perfect, but died for everybody who was imperfect? Who wouldn't be drawn to someone who would hang on the cross, and while hanging on the cross, he would say, Father, forgive them. Who would not be drawn to a man that could heal the sick, that could possibly be your kinfolk, could raise the dead? could give sight to the blind, could give, cause lame folk to walk, cause people that can't see to see, people that can't hear to hear. Who would not be drawn to somebody like that? Who wouldn't be drawn to somebody that when he died, the earth got dark? Couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. Who would not be drawn to somebody that would look at his mama and say, Mama, behold your son? Who would not be drawn? To a man that is a criminal and a thief that is ready to die. And on that day, he says to that man, this day you will be with me in paradise. Who would not be drawn to somebody like that? And y'all, that's our story. That's, that's what we heard. And we heard it a lot of different ways. Some of us heard it from our pastor. Some of us heard it from another preacher. Some of us heard it from our mama, our daddy, our grandmother, our mother, dear, our big mama, whoever it was. We all heard one day somebody say to us, he died. Yeah. Oh, yes, we heard that. We heard how he healed the sick, raised the dead. We heard all of that. And we were attracted to what we heard. But you got to understand, if God didn't give us the ability, matter of fact, John chapter 6, verse 44, would actually say this, that we didn't come on our own. The Father had to draw us. To himself, so Jesus said, And if I be lifted up, I'll draw. Yeah. I'll draw. Yeah. I'll draw. Yeah. That that eye that we talked about in chapter one, that eye that can only be described as by Jesus, that eye that's personally him and nobody else. And I, if I be lifted up, yeah. here's what I do: I will draw. And, 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 and if you read it, in, if you read this in the original language, you can't find the word men, you can't find the word. Matter of fact, when you read your translation, look at verse 32 again. When you read it, doesn't, doesn't it see the word men or peoples in italics? The font is a little different from the rest of your text. Actually, in the, in the original language, the word people or men is not even mentioned. All he was doing is implied that his people don't. So what he's saying, I will draw all unto me. Now, that's where we ought to be happy. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth that I created and that I control, here's what I'm going to do. I will pull. I will draw. Yeah, I will. I will, watch this, drag all to me. And so when I'm, when I'm looking at this day, when I'm looking at this day is that we can invite anybody to come. We invite others to come to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ with us. Guess what? We, we ought to be thankful that we've been included in this all statement of Jesus. Come on, help me, y'all, just for just a moment. You've been included in the all. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw I like that word all, y'all. I like that word all. Because in, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. All means all within the context of the all. Mm -hmm. All right. All don't mean all, like all. It means all, but it's controlled by the context of which the all is. In other words, in other words, in other words, you know, you, you hear people say sometimes, all them children. Well, in reality, it wasn't all the children. It was all the children that were doing what you said based upon what you said. In other words, all those children were just so nice. Mm -hmm.
It don't mean that all of the children were nice, but all of the children that you put to be nice were nice. Does that make sense? All them children bad. Not, you know it don't mean all them children bad. But all of the children that do bad things, that's what you're talking about at that moment. That's the all. But in this case, Jesus is talking about an eye, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Now watch this. Remember, he already said, ain't nobody coming to me unless the Father draws them. So we got to be pr- grateful to God that God saw us in our sin. God saw us when we were doing what we were doing. God saw us when we were acting like we were acting. And I need to help somebody understand none of you all were born saved. Can I get a witness in here? None of us were born saved. I still, I still meet people today who actually believe they're going to heaven based upon the credit of their grandparents. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You talk to them. They say, man, how you know how you, you go to church? Well, you know, no, I don't go. But you know, my, my grandmother, my grandfather, you know, they, they started that church over there. And I'm looking at it, what that got to do with you, though? Thinking that because of my attachment to somebody else, it automatically constitutes, guess what? Not all. But all of us who, when he saw us in our sin, saw us doing what we were doing, saw us living the way we wanted to live, doing the things we wanted to do unapologetically, unashamed, we were just having a good time doing whatever we wanted to do under the sun. But God chose to draw us to himself. Anybody glad about that today? When you think about what you were doing when you got saved, who you were when you got saved, the folk you were hanging out with when you got saved, that says to you, that had to be somebody loving, somebody gracious, somebody mighty good that would draw you to himself. Because we're already determined in Romans chapter 3, you did not come here on your own. He had to draw you to himself. So watch this. And I, if I be lifted up, we'll draw all, watch this, unto me. Going back again to the, the I at the beginning becomes the me at the end. Watch again how he does it. We're, we're done. Going back to chapter 12, verse 32. He says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all to myself. What do you mean all, Lord? I mean all that I look upon, all that I see, all that I know, all that I call to be my sheep, all my sheep that hear my voice, all that were sinners that now hear the gospel and respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the all. But think about that all. What does that all look at like? Galatians, Galatians 3, verse 26 says, For you are all sons of God, through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you has been baptized into Christ and put on Christ, there's neither, watch this, Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you are, watch this, all one in Christ Jesus. But notice how he describes it. We all got to be one where in the person of Christ Jesus. And so he says now, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Well, Lord, how do we know that's going to work out? Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 says, And they sang a new song. You are worthy, talking to Jesus, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open up its seal. For you were slain and have been redeemed to us by God, by the blood out of every tribe, every tongue, every people. Every nation. I got to ask you, are you a part of a tribe? Are you a part of a nation? Are you a part of a tongue? You got to understand, if you're in that, God says that he has included you in his plan of redemption. And so the reality is it doesn't matter on the color of your skin. You've been chosen by Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. You've been chosen by Jesus. 
it does not matter if you're born on one side of the track or another side of the track. You've been chosen by Jesus. It doesn't matter if you are male or female. You have been chosen by Jesus. And that's the thing that we celebrate today. That's what we rejoice in more than anything else. That because he was hung on the cross and said, if I be lifted up, we'll draw all unto me. And so here's the, the, the clue for us. We recognize where we're going. We know what God has in store for us. So the message for us now is to tell somebody about the one that drew us to himself. Can I help somebody here today? If just each one of us would lead one somebody else to Jesus Christ, every tongue, every tribe, Every nation is going to be represented in this heaven that has been created for those that God has drawn to himself. And so you today ought to celebrate. You today ought to rejoice for knowing that there are seven, six billion people on planet earth. And out of those six billion people, God chose to choose you. I'm, I'm going to say that one more time because everybody, everybody not praising him like I think you ought to. Six billion people on planet earth. And out of everybody God could have chose, he chose. So I'm going to ask you now, if you are glad that you are part of the all crowd, if you are glad that you are part of the all people, all nation, all tongue. I don't know how you're going to do it, but right now you give him the highest praise you can possibly give him. Just because, just because he chose to draw you to himself. Y'all, 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 you know, when you think about it, we've been some rascals. Come on, help me, y'all. We've been some liars. We've been some cheaters. We've been some backbiters. We've been some connivers. But in the midst of it all, it didn't stop the Lord from drawing us to him. So when I think about the fact that he drew me to my sin self, and I was all in my sin, I was all in my cantankerous ways, I was doing me and nobody else. But he drawn me to himself. I can't help but stop and tell the Lord thank you. Because I know where I was. I know what I was doing. But you drew me to yourself. If you can't say that, you ought to pause right now and tell the Lord thank you. I was so messed up. Thank you. I was about to throw in the towel, but you drew me to yourself. And right now, I got joy. I got peace. I got love. We got mercy. We got his goodness. We got his kindness. We got his grace. To tell the Lord, thank you right now, thank you right now, thank you right now, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, draw all unto me, and you have been included in that all. Now I know this is a bit self-indulgent when you do that because it could just turn to neighbor. And, and turn to, just turn to neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm glad he drew me. Come on, come on, turn to neighbor. I'm glad he drew me. Yeah. I'm glad he drew me. I'm glad. I'm glad he drew me. I'm so glad he drew me. Can you imagine what your life would have been like without him now? I'm glad he drew me. Because the, the reality is, had he left us in what we were doing, most of us have been dead now. But we've done some pretty criminal things. 
Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. And I, I love this. I love this. There's a song that uh, part of our, our hymnals in our church, uh, a man by the name of uh, Johnson Oatman Jr. is responsible for over 3,000 hymns. He wrote this song some years ago. And just listen to the message. Just listen to the message. We might sing it. God the Spirit lead us. But it says, how to reach the masses. And, 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 and really is asking a question. How to reach the masses, men of every birth. He says, for the answer, Jesus gave the key. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And so we, so we do this little refrain. Watch this. Lift him up. Lift him up. But why do we do that? Notice, still he speaks from eternity. What, he, what, he, what is he saying? And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. I know some of y'all will get upset with me, but I, 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 always, I always try to look at whenever you, you, you're doing anything that, that relates to God, you always want to look, do, do what the Bible says. And, and this is probably the only part of the phrase of the song I disagree with. And I, my wife and I will have a discussion when I go home. She said, Lee, you always analyzing everything. I said, no, I just try to be the truth. The man says this. Brother, 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 brother uh, Oatman said this. He says, the world is hungry for the living bread. I said, no, no, the world ain't. Romans 3 says, ain't nobody looking for Jesus. So I disagree with that part of the song. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not going to stop singing it. But this is what he said. The world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust him. And do not doubt the words that he said. I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. What is he saying? And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. I love this part of it. Did, I didn't know this song that was in there. Because see, that's what some of us try to do sometimes. And we mess up. He says, watch. Don't exalt the preacher. Don't exalt the pew. Preach the gospel simple, full, and free. Prove him, and you'll find that his promise is true. I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Last phrase, last, last, last verse. Lift him up by living as a Christian ought. Let the world in you, the Savior, see. Then men will gladly follow him once taught. I'll draw all men unto me. So what do we got to do? Lift him up, y'all. Lift him up. Why do we do that? Still he speaks from eternity. And what is he saying? And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all unto me. Doesn't matter on the murderer. Doesn't matter if it's a thief. Doesn't matter if it's a homemonger. We'll draw all men unto me. Doesn't matter what continent they're born on, whether it's Asia, Africa, Antarctica. Doesn't matter where they come from. It could be Africa. It could be Australia. Doesn't matter on the continent, North America, South America. Could be Europe. Doesn't matter. I'll draw but we got to lift him up. And I'm not talking about just in our praise. We got to lift him up in our profession. That he died for us. He gave his life for us. And because he gave his life for us, he says, I will draw all men unto me. Father, we love you and thank you for Jesus. For knowing that that message, I will draw all men unto me, still applies today, Lord. It's clear to us that he did die on that cross. You did give your son to give his life for us. But we thank you, God, he was buried. But Sunday morning, you got him up. And so we know that that message means something to us. The fact that he was lifted says now he can draw us to you, Father. And we thank you for Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, for everybody represented here today, we thank you that there are people in this building who have been drawn to your love, by your love, 
through the love you've demonstrated in your son, Jesus Christ. So I pray even today, Lord, that you would draw them to yourself. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Our servant leaders, if you can stand where you are, brothers. The invitation. Today we want to encourage somebody that may not know Jesus. Because here we are today, we're lifting him up. And we're not saying we're lifting him up to be crucified. No, we lift him up so you can see that he was crucified. We lift him up so that you can know that he did give his life. And he made the promise. He said this, if I'm lifted up, we'll draw all men to me. And so today, I don't know who you are. Maybe you're visiting with us again. Maybe you visited before. Maybe you're a member. And your name is on the road. But maybe even through this message, God has said to your heart today, Jesus is saying, I want to draw you to myself. If that's you today, stand where you are, come if you choose.